The Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, or MCMC, has given the green light for the proposed merger of the telco operations of Axiata Group and Digi.com to create the nation's largest mobile service operator. The merger application for Cellcom and Digi was submitted to the regulator for assessment in July last year. In a joint statement, Axiata and Digi said they received a notice of no objection from the MCMC, which means it is satisfied that the commitment offered by the two telcos will significantly reduce the competition issues that will or may arise as a result of this proposed merger. Undertakings under the commitment include the divestment of 70 MHz of Spectrum and Cellcom's Udo mobile service, as well as the setting up of a separate independent mobile virtual network operator's wholesale business unit and the positioning of Digi and Cellcom's existing prepaid and postpaid products under a single corporate brand. The MCMC's notice paves the way for the two parties to advance to the next phase of the proposed transaction. Axiata's shares closed 1.78% higher at 2 ringgit 86, while Digi's shares ended the day up 5.23% at 3 ringgit 42. Stakes in Digital National Berhad or DNB, the special purpose vehicle set up to roll out the 5G network nationwide, may have been taken up by telco players at the 11th hour, ahead of tomorrow's deadline for them to finalise their decision. According to a report by Singapore's Straits Times, industry sources claim that a non binding term sheet had been agreed upon by six telcos ahead of the deadline. This, along with a shareholder's agreement to take up a stake in DNB, which is expected to be signed early next month. Sources told The Straits Times that due diligence is currently being done and should be completed within a fortnight. Other sources told The Daily that out of nine telcos, only six, including Cellcom Axiata, Digi.com, Maxis and U-Mobile, will take up equal shares in DNB. The report said that based on a planned injection of 500 million ringgit by the Ministry of Finance for the government's 30% stake, it implies each of the six telcos will cough up around 200 million ringgit for a 12% share. The Straits Times was also made to understand that the agreement will include a price review that will be overseen by the MCMC every three years. The report added that wholesale pricing will be discounted until DNB achieves 80% nationwide coverage, which is expected to happen only by 2024. The government has announced a new ceiling price for standard whole chicken at 9 ringgit 40 cent per kilogram effective July 1st as it attempts to keep a lead on the soaring prices of food. It also set the maximum retail price for chicken eggs in Peninsula Malaysia with grade A eggs at 45 cent each, grade B eggs at 43 cent each and grade C eggs at 41 cent each. Agriculture and Food Industries Minister Dato Sri Dr Ronald Kiandi said the decision was made in accordance nation with the extra cash aid announced via the Bantuan Kluaga Malaysia scheme. The new ceiling prices on chicken and eggs will spell an additional allocation of 369.5 million ringgit, bringing the overall total amount of subsidies to 1.1 billion ringgit since February 5th. Last Friday, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said the government had decided not to float the prices of chicken. The current ceiling price for standard whole chicken stands at 8 ringgit 90 cent per kilogram and is set to end tomorrow. The Ministry of Transport, MOT and the government informed the federal court today they would need a month to finalise their settlement with Daya Maju LTAT over the company's suit and judicial review after it was terminated from the Klang Valley Double Tracking 2 project. Lawyers for the government, MOT and Daya Maju LTAT concurred that their clients would need a month to decide. The court fixed July 29th for the case to be mentioned. Daya Maju LTAT had filed a civil suit against Putrajaya and and MOT following its sudden termination from the project. It was initially axed by the PH government in 2018, but was allowed to continue following a slight reduction in cost, only for it to be terminated again by the PN administration. The company also filed a judicial review application in a bid to stop Putrajaya from acquiring the worksite and retendering the project. Earlier this month, a senior federal counsel revealed that the project will resume with Diamaju L. TAT as its contractor.
Malaysia's improved macroeconomic performance in April signals that economic recovery remains in sight amid global uncertainty, the Department of Statistics said today. Chief Statistician Datuk Sri Dr. Muhammad Uzir Mahidin said Malaysia is blessed with natural resources and commodities. It also benefits from the high commodity prices, resulting in a resilient trade performance in recent months. Going forward, he said Malaysia is expected to book stronger economic recovery in the coming months. Meanwhile, HSBC Research said in a note today that the outlook for Malaysia's economy has brightened following the reopening of its borders on April 1st. It said thanks to a well-diversified mix of exports, Malaysia not only stands to benefit from soaring commodity prices but also continues to ride on the extended tech upswing. It upgraded its 2022 forecasts for Malaysia's GDP growth to 5.7% and average inflation to 3.2% and sees the central bank raising interest rates by 25 basis points next month. Earlier this week, SMP Global Ratings revised Malaysia's long-term sovereign credit ratings outlook to stable from negative and projected Malaysia's 2022 GDP growth to hit 6.1%.